In today's episode of Watch Time, we're gonna talk about our process for video production, how it's all laid out, and what you can expect if you work with us or maybe another video production company out there. So stick around. Welcome back to Watch Time, everybody. Um, today is uh, going to be a solo episode. We don't have any special guests, but we're going to be talking about a very important topic. Right. You know, it's, it never hurts to go back to basics. We thought that maybe a lot of people get kind of confused about, you know, what the process is for professional video production. And maybe if you've even worked with different video companies, maybe our process is a little bit different. So we thought it would be good to just kind of go through what you can expect when you're generally working with a video production or marketing company and specifically with, with us. I do think like that is something that I'm sure many of you that are even watching or listening right now think about like when you think about the video production process, it's it's kind of maybe daunting because you don't really know what goes into it. And I feel like that is very like, I'd say a big hurdle that we have to kind of jump with a lot of clients is kind of explaining to them more of what we're looking at. So I think taking it from the all the way from the initial inquiry all the way down to handing the final product is a great way to kind of dive in. So do you want me to jump in with the first part or do you want to? Yeah, I think again, you know, just just really the key message is that there's a lot more that goes into it rather than just like showing up and shooting. You know, there's a lot of prep work and then there's a lot of work after the fact too. A lot of people think, you know, okay, the video shoot is done then I'll get a draft the next day. So just kind of going through all of that. So yeah, maybe we start with um, when people first contact us and, and what is kind of the first step we take. Yeah, I think that's I think that's what's good about that. I think a lot of people um, we do get a lot of we get some praise from clients because I know they like the fact that we have some type of pricing structure on our website. It's not exact numbers, but it gives them a ballpark range. And I know some people that are listening or, you know, they might be thinking, well, why can't we have an exact number? Why can't there be a package? And I think we're, we're kind of working towards trying to find some type of package just for people that are maybe looking for that. But the, the main reason being with the whole inquiry process is it's like anything else. It's like if you contact a contractor and you say, you know, I need my bathroom tiled, you might just, you're not just going to say I need my bathroom tiled, what's that cost? The contractor has to come out, they have to measure the space, they have to figure out what kind of tile you need, what color grout, and all of that kind of plays into, you know, the actual pricing. So when you reach out to us, what's going to end up happening is we kind of have to have a little bit of a discovery call to understand better, not only what type of video you're looking to create, but if that video actually is the right video for you. Because how many times have we had people come in and they want an explainer video that talks about their business, but then they go, well, I'm having a hard time getting customers to convert. And really, what you probably need at that point is a testimonial video because you need to have those customers kind of envision themselves, like getting that pain point like reduced and removed and being able to like, you know, be the hero of their story. We were saying with, you know, the, the, the discovery meeting really helps with um, direction. And then by targeting that direction and figuring out, you know, what exactly you need, that helps us to give you a better price, too. Because, you know, when you contact us, we might be able to give you a range in pricing. But really having that discovery call and figuring out what exactly, which video is going to work best for you um, and how exactly it's going to be put together will allow us to give you a plan and a better price. Well, and I think one thing to really think about too with this discovery meeting for people listening that are maybe like, I just don't even really know what I want. This is a great place um, to really have that conversation. It really no cost to anybody. We don't charge for a discovery meeting. We don't charge for quotes. And um, I, I don't really think companies should do that because, you know, when you come, like when somebody comes to us, they don't really know what they need. So this is a great time to really kind of brainstorm and, you know, run wild and let's get the grandest idea you have and we'll give you a price for that. And then let's get the most modest idea you have and we'll give you a price for that. And you can kind of see the range of price points this way. It's not like, you know, you're coming to us and we're going to give you a Hollywood level production. We might need to give you more of a smaller level to fit your budget, but at least you can kind of brainstorm and see what things cost and you get ideas for the future too. Right. So after we have that discovery meeting, we can give you a more accurate quote proposal um, and if you sign off on that, then we kind of go into the pre-production process because one thing that's really important, again, it's not just about showing up and shooting because the more you plan, the more effective your video is going to be. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do think, I mean, and and not to say that like showing up to an event or to somebody's 
office and getting B-roll footage and shooting is necessarily a bad thing. So I know there are a lot of videographers that that's kind of like they kind of go shoot a bunch of stuff and see what they can piece together out of that. And I do think there's there's a, a place for that. I think a lot of that makes great social media reels and like short form videos and clips and different things that you can do with it. But to your point, Kathy, like, you know, when people see some of our work and they go, wow, this was amazing. Like, how did you get this interview to like be able to look like this? Or how did you get that person to be able to say that? Or how did you get that footage to line up? You know, it, in that that two to three minute video, you don't realize the hours of work that prep work that went in prior to even arriving on site. And I think that's kind of in this pre-production process, that's when we're really going to sit down and figure out what are your business goals? Like, what is your messaging? How does this video play into your overall content, I guess, landscape? You know, is this going on your website? Is it going to social media? Like, is it driving traffic somewhere? And then really trying to tell a story and then control how that story is going to go. So much so to when we get on site, it's really a matter of just working with the person being interviewed to really get them to either follow a script or ask them the right questions to sound natural and then have a shot list that our team can then just go and start checking boxes. Like we have this shot of the team working here. We have this shot of the product being manufactured. We have this shot, you know, of the product going to the customer. So we can really just start having two teams running and checking boxes and then going home with everything we need to lay this out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you touched on a lot of things, which, you know, the pre-production process is, is really my area of focus. And so, you know, we're going to take the information that we gather from that discovery meeting and we're going to either write a script. If we have a voiceover, that might be an actual, um, you know, sentence kind of structure script. If we're doing interviews, that might be coming up with questions that um, we can give you in advance to know what to expect for your interview. Uh, maybe we're interviewing your customers, so then you can share those questions with them. And then we're putting together the shot list like you touched on. And um, really just we, we share that that um, the pre-production script and the shot plan with both the customer and then our internal teams, too, so that they can kind of get an idea of what they're getting into, even if they weren't on that dis initial discovery call with us and they know what the overall goal is. So we're all aligned. Yeah. And one thing to, to think about for people listening, you know, this this sounds like a lot of work going into this, but really it's our team that's doing a lot of this work. Your main focus at this point is getting us the information maybe we need about your company. So really just telling us your story and then also approving the stuff that we put together and making sure it fits what you're looking to do. And our team really is great at this. And Kathy is great at taking what you give her and actually turning that into this this whole plan that will then execute the day of the production. That's a great point. So, at, you know, to this point, your your time commitment is really just the initial discovery meeting. We like to keep that meet half an hour, hour, um, and then just being able to review the draft of the script and the and the shot plan. Um, maybe there's an edit on that, and then really it's time to plan the shoot. Yeah, and that's you know, that's where they say the magic happens. And like, really, <laughs> I think with that, um, that's that's something that can be a little daunting because people don't really know what to expect, and we've. We've heard a variety of things like we've heard people say, wow, like we just thought it was going to be one person or, you know, we've heard people say like we had no idea that there was all these lights involved in this type of production. And I think that's one thing to really think about in term of, terms of the time commitment on, on location is we do need some time to set up. We are going to probably have smaller shoot, maybe three to four people if it's a larger shoot, maybe five to seven people, depending on what we're trying to capture, how many interviews how much B-roll, how many locations. Um, and it could even end up being multiple days. But I think the, to your point about the time commitment aspect, so what is the time commitment even on site for the people that are, you know, for the, the customers that are getting involved or the people that need to produce something like this? And um, I'd say the time commitment probably, you know, what we try to do is we, we minimize the amount of time that we need to borrow people from the company because we realize that you know, these people are working. These people are, are helping you achieve your business goals. So we try to get all of our equipment set up and then ask for the person that we're interviewing. We try to, as soon as they're done, use them to get B-roll footage right away so we can, you know, maximize their time and maybe borrow them for an hour, hour and a half, and then kind of get onto the next person and get them moving. So it's really trying to be um, setting up and having as nice a production as possible, but being as I guess, not as invasive as you would think for having a large scale production. Yeah, we want to keep everything efficient. And, you know, in that in that shot plan, in the pre-production, 
a lot of times we include a schedule too, especially if we're working with, with multiple teams or multiple customers. So again, when the customer knows exactly when they're, they have to come in or the executive or whoever, and, you know, we try to kind of block together what we need to achieve with them in a certain time and then they're free to go. So, yeah, I think that's, and that's, that's the big thing is it's like, it seems like a lot and, and it is, it is a lot of equipment and a lot of work going into uh, certain productions, I would say. But at the same time, it's really all necessary to be able to achieve the look and the professional feel of the video and also achieve that shot list. And um, I think, you know, with that, what's nice is we we always do um, a great job at putting things back the way we find it. I know that's always a big yes, aspect. Yes, that's, that's one thing I learned in Girl Scouts. You should leave the place better than you found it. So we may move things around, but we definitely try to be respectful of the space as well. And really, you know, leave you with not a mess to clean up after we've come into your office. So, so that's that's really the production process. There's there. It's really not so much involved for the client, but there's a lot going on on our end. And like you had said, Kathy, we have that all laid out um, in in some type of format so everybody can see what's going on that day. So now that we have all this footage, we have to take it back and we have to really use the magic of editing. So do you want to maybe talk a little bit about what what they may expect to see? you know, from the editing process. Yeah. You know, we, we do this great shoot day or maybe a couple days and everybody's really excited and pumped at the end. And then of course, what's the first question we get from clients after that? You know, how long is it going to take to, to get a, a draft of a video to look at? Um, and while, you know, you may be done after that shoot, the work kind of the editing work for us begins. And, Um, you know, there's, there's a lot, think of everything that we might have captured even in a, you know, half a day shoot. There's a lot of footage that our editor needs to go through and that takes time. And, you know, you're going through the footage, you're, you're picking out quotes, you're picking out shots. And then those shots have to be, um, you know, color corrected and edited and, and there's sound elements and maybe, maybe you're including, um, other things like, uh, music or, um, stock footage. And and so there's a lot of kind of piecing, going through footage and putting things together. And I'm sure our editor Josh can talk about this a lot more. Um, but there, you know, it does take time to kind of look through everything, the audio that you captured and really be able to put everything together. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> it's it's a lot to manage. I, I would say like, if you, if you really think about the editing process and you think about taking in the raw footage, you think about cutting up the raw footage, you think about color correcting the raw footage, you think about uh, working with the audio, adding music, really the editor is going through all of this content, you know, five or six times. And you've got to really think that if, you know, if you have a full day shoot and that shoots an eight hour shoot day and say you capture three or four hours worth of content, the editor is going through three to four hours worth of content five to eight times throughout the editing process just to lay everything out, not to mention going back through and then actually making the changes that the customers have. And I think one thing that we do a lot, and I'm sure other companies do too, and this is something to think about when you know when you think about, oh well, this this uh, three to four minute video took three weeks to edit. We do a lot of internal review, and and we do that mainly because we want a very polished product to go out immediately to our clients, and I think a lot of people do because it minimizes changes. Like if we can notice that there's a piece of audio that needs to be cut, or you know something needs to be adjusted in the color correction, we can make those changes prior to the client even seeing the rough cut. Yeah. Yeah. So we do an internal review and we also want to make sure that everything that we've captured and put together is really delivering the message that we, in, you know, intended in to um, share in the pre-production and, and really working to um, further your goal that we set out, you know, to, to accomplish. Um, so there's a lot of that um, happening. And so, so what would you say is maybe, I know it kind of maybe depends on how many projects we have going on, but what on average do you think how long people can expect to maybe get a a first draft after the shoot day? So right now, um, we have been telling everyone maybe about two to three weeks. I think it's closer to the three week mark. It just kind of depends sometimes, you know, depending on the ebbs and flows of the year, we might have a a couple projects get finished up. We get it closer to two. But we're really pushing for the three because we would rather, you know, um, promise you three and get it to you in two or, you know, and and like you said, it kind of does depend. There are times like where we are really busy throughout the year and we try to tell clients like, you know, normally we're two to three weeks, but now we're looking at three to four weeks. Um, and, and a lot of that's just because we want to make sure we give every project the attention and the time that it deserves because this is an investment. And 
when, you know, if you had somebody in your house, you know, doing work to your plumbing or your electrical or your HVAC, you wouldn't want to rush them because you want to make sure you have a quality furnace working in your house or the lights are going to turn on and they didn't like hurry up and push the wiring. So this is something that I think um, we, we really try to let clients know is like, I know it takes a little while, but we want to make sure that what you get you're proud of and it's something that's going to really enhance your brand. Yeah. And I think it's just important to share that. Um, not that we're trying to like complain about like how long things take or anything, but, but just like to factor that into your planning, you know, if, if you're looking to have a video that you want released at a certain time, you know, you do want to work a few months ahead of time, if possible, obviously we will try to accomplish, you know, whatever needs to be done as quickly as possible, but it's, it's not, it's typically not, you know, a great idea to come to us at the beginning of a month and then expect a, a video completely done maybe by the end of the month from, from, um, you know, first discovery call all the way through final approval. And not to say, I guess, that we can't do that if you do have a need for a rush job like that, but know that that is a rush job and that there's fees that go along with that. And it's not because necessarily that, you know, we just want to charge more money because it's we have a shorter time frame, but it's really because we have to bring on additional people to assist our in-house team to really be able to achieve these goals. And it displaces our system that we currently have in place for other clients. So that's where that extra cost comes from, bringing in outside vendors that we are trusted partners of ours to help us kind of achieve the goals of that client. So, you know, if you are doing something last minute and you want to reach out to us, that's fine. But just know that the pricing will vary from, you know, wanting a video in a month or less versus like just coming to us saying, I don't have really have a deadline, but, you know, when can I get this done? So. So anyway, jumping back into, um, you know, after we we do have a draft of the video to share um, we will share it to you. We like to use this platform called Whipster. You may be familiar with it, but it's this, it's this really great platform where um, you can actually leave comments on the video directly. So it's really great, you know, to share with, you know, maybe our contact and then they can leave edits and then maybe they pass it around to their team and gather edits. And then we have all of those comments in one file and we're able to make changes efficiently. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think that's the key with, with changes is, it allows the team to kind of be on the same page. So if you think about, you know, uh, especially a larger company where maybe you have a large marketing department and they all kind of have to review this rather than, you know, three out of the five people giving us the same feedback, everyone can see and be like, oh, you know, Jane already left that feedback. We don't need to leave that. And then it simplifies it for our editor. That way our editor you know, can be more efficient and then go to one place to look at everything and make those changes. Yeah, I feel like it's very easy to use. It's very efficient. And then typically we do do two, allow two rounds of changes. So, um, you know, maybe we make those changes. Maybe there's a couple more things we have to tweak. And then we really should be ready to deliver your final video. One thing to mention, too, about those those changes is um, I always try to tell um, people when we're working with them, and this I think is true across the board, no matter what company you're working with, when it comes to revisions, if you make a revision on a Monday, you know, could it be done by a Friday potentially? Could it be done, you know, it's probably more likely the next Monday. I always tell people, give us about a week for the revisions. They'll probably be done sooner. But at the same time, like I, I was saying before, we have this system where we're trying to like give everybody's project the attention that it deserves. And in order to do that, you know, our editor, once your revisions come in, it kind of goes into their queue to be able to start making those changes. So just keeping in mind, like, hey, I made these changes on Monday. I'll probably get them next Monday. Maybe, like I said, if we can do it sooner, we'll do it sooner. But I always like to keep that in mind when it comes to the timeline of your project that, you know, if, if I make a uh, round of revisions, wait a week. If I got a second round, wait, a, wait a, uh, another week. And some people, though, like we've done, we try to polish it so much that they get the initial cut and they go, this is perfect. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. So it kind of just depends. But those, just to, to have an idea of what to expect. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes, you know, that's the end of our journey, but other times, just depending on, you know, the expertise of your marketing team or what kind of resources you have, um, sometimes we get people that are like, okay, I got this video and now what? So one thing that we're trying to, uh, offer more of and work with our clients more on is video implementation. Mm -hmm. So we can show you exactly, you know, how, how do you post this on Instagram to make it successful? Um, how else should you be sharing it? and just kind of strategies for how to really, um, you know, make your video work for you. Yeah. And I think that's really important. You know, when you make an investment, it's like, to me, that's kind of like buying a piece of furniture and not getting the instructions with it and you have to put it together. So um, think of it like that. So, you know, a lot of times you may already have an expert carpenter in house that's going to assemble that piece of furniture for you. But if you don't have that, um, to your point, Kathy, like 
we can help and guide you with that. And also don't think that this is necessarily something that's going to just be uh, an, another added expense or super expensive. Like obviously like we're here to support you. So if you just have a question or two about where do I put this thing? Like we're more than happy to answer that. We have some uh, different content that we'll be pushing out that'll talk about that as well that we can even direct you to. But if you really are looking for someone to maybe help you with your ads or help you, you know, have some content written for those posts or even help, you know, get the, those posts launched, that is something that we really are trying to develop because, you know, it's it's like anything else. Going back to the furniture analogy, you can go to the store and have them put the furniture together for you and deliver it. So um, that's another way to kind of look at this as well. So I think that's something that we're kind of excited to offer and be able to start doing more of. Yeah. So I think that pretty much covers our, our process. Hopefully that's helpful for people to understand what to expect if they work with us or another video team. Um, so uh, let us know if you have other questions based off of what we said, and we'd love to answer them. Thanks for listening to Watch Time. We hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. And remember to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. And if you want your question answered on our podcast, go to flexmediacle.com backslash watch time.